Lift up your voice and say, Father, I am grateful to you. For your goodness, I am grateful. For your mercies, for your kindness, for your provisions, for sparing my life, for keeping me healthy. For my family, I thank you. For all you have done. Blessed be your holy name. For bringing me to see the second half of this year. Faithful God, I thank you. I worship you. I give glory to your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. This month, you will see wonders. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever the enemy has been using mysteriously against you, it will be turned for a testimony for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. This month, no one of you will see shame. Amen. No one of you will suffer disgrace. Amen. By the hand of God, his plans will be fulfilled in your life. Amen. That testimony that is making your heart to faint, it will be a testimony for you this month. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. wherever you have been mocked, God will give you a landmark testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make that amen louder. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. And please take your seat. This month of enough is enough. No more shit. No more insult. No more disappointment. No more mockery. If you are saying amen, say better amen. The enemy will give up concerning you. Now I like you if you love your life. Go and get these books. They are very cheap. Some of us here make calls more than 10,000 per month. You jump up. The law of gravity say, come down. Am I saying the truth? Everybody stand up. Or oh, you yeah, jump up and stay up. Is it possible? Sit down. <laughs> the force of gravity say you must come down. <laughs> In physics, they call it gravitational force. Spiritually, if you must go up and stay up, you need the force of faith. Tell your neighbor you need the force of faith. When the force of faith is at work, whatever is resisting you must give up on you. Hear this. If you refuse to be violent, you may not be free from oppression. There are different levels of oppression. Mental oppression. Spiritual oppression. Financial oppression. Emotional oppression. I hope you know emotion can oppress you. There are some people that cannot eat because somebody did not call them. He didn't call me today. 
So the person is on hunger strike today. One sister came. I'm sorry. One sister came that uh, Pastor, he say, he say he doesn't want to marry me again. I said, uh-huh. He said, but we have agreed. I said, but if the agreement is not holding again, go now. Not by force. I know somebody is angry with me now. But let me shock you. How will it be that you married another person's husband? <laughs> so if you say you no agree again, thank God and run for your life. Am I saying something to somebody? You say you break your heart. This time now your lungs you go break. <laughs> if you go back, <laughs> the violence. If you refuse to be violent, you remain perpetually under oppression. Ephesians 4 verse 27 Neither give place to the devil If you refuse to be violent you will be displaced by the devil Tell your neighbor you must be violent Satan is seeking a place. And any place he takes means you are displaced. It takes violence to take your place. You have a place. Tell your neighbor you have a place. There is a place prepared. So you need violence to take your place. If you refuse to be violent, number one, you will be perpetually remain under oppression. Oppression. And you know, the oppression of the devil is the gateway to depression. The devil always come to get a place. In real life, we must have seen where it is written, no parking. Have you seen where it is written, no parking? And if you violate it, you will be arrested. It takes violence to get a permanent this thing called no parking. Satan is a hawker. Say with me, a hawker. He goes around looking for who will buy. Will you buy sickness? Will you buy poverty? Will you buy shame? But if you see a place where they write, beware of dogs. <laughs> Who has seen beware of dogs before? Even if your head, something is doing you, you will be careful. Am I saying the truth? There are some dogs when they pursue you, you say, cock a back. But there are some dogs, the moment they come out, <laughs> even if the fence is, they use bottle to put it, you will hold the bottle. Am I saying the truth? It takes violence 
to catch bottle even when you know that the bottle will tear your hand it's better for the bottle to tear your hand for a rottweiler to bite you am i saying something to somebody why did you catch bottle violence it takes violence to die bottle and escape rottweiler correct So every one of us seated here now, there is a gene of violence inside you. Everyone here carries the gene of violence. In your DNA, there is violence. Let me use it the way you understand it. Everybody you see here now has 1% madness. Am I saying the truth? I'm a law-abiding citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Do you agree with me? <laughs> Something happened the other day. I was trying to rush to the airport. We got to, I don't know which, I don't know the name of the town along the road. I rose it. He said, hey, stop. Driver, breaking leg. Jamming! You saw a truck carrying load. People standing on top. You didn't stop them. Breaking leg. Immediately got to... You know they see where. <laughs> you know they see where. <laughs> now hear me. If you know your rights, you cannot be molested. You cannot be insulted. One happened along Umaya or Kigwe Road. I was coming. The man stopped me. He stopped the driver. He collected the papers. He went. He didn't say anything, no. So vehicle has been passed. I've been seeing them carrying load. The one that carried load, they didn't stop them. So when he now came, he gave the driver the paper. Do you know what I did? Tua! I said, next time, take note of this car. You stop it. Now jam, I go jam you. You delayed my journey. You didn't tell me anything. Vehicles have been passing, carrying load, offensible goods. You didn't stop them. You just stopped me. That slap is to remind you of this car. <laughs> His organa came. Oh, God, are we fighting? I said, yes. Yes, we are fighting. Why will you stop me? No offense. No nothing. You just stopped me for what? And you didn't say anything. The slap is to remind you anytime you see this car, clear for road. You need, tell your neighbor you need that madness. I didn't say you should go and fight them on the road. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is to fuel your violence. I know where I'm going. Just follow me, small, small. If you don't take violence, you can't resist the devil. You can't. Resistance is a product of violence. And when you resist the devil, he can't insist. Tell your neighbor he can't insist. The devil does not have a final say in your matter. He doesn't have a final say in your matter. 
scripture says, resist the devil. Hear me? You need violence to resist him. If not, he will not flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. No violence, no resistance. And it takes the violence of faith to resist the enemy of your life. The enemy of God's plan and purpose for your life. Hear me? Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. You don't watch it. You don't want, you don't want. There is no gentle way to let someone know, I don't want. And if you go gentle, you suffer more. I've discovered that people that think that they are gentle, they are the ones suffering more in the hand of the devil. He will keep oppressing you. And you know, the more the oppression, the more fear. And the more the fear, the more, the more horror you suffer. You need the violence of faith to end the oppression and the torment of the wicked around your life. You need it. That is why you must consciously, say with me, consciously, develop a resistant mentality to fight stagnation, to fight rejection, to fight satanic manipulation, to break the spell of failure, you must develop it. Enough is enough. I have been disappointed enough. I have suffered lack enough. I have lived in this fear enough. So when you build that resistance mentality, even your enemy will understand that this person is not willing to accept our shit again no? The violence of faith is the pressing faith. You must press to enter your rest. Faith does not say no until the answer is in the hand. It does not quit. Why? Because God's word cannot quit. It cannot fail. The violence of faith is a pressing faith. Why? If you have not gotten your answer, keep pressing. We are made to understand in the first service, the more you speak, the more your enemy becomes weak. Every time you release the voice of faith, your enemies go weak. Your enemies go weak. If you don't press, you will never enter your rest. If you fail to press, you will never gain access. If you fail to press, you cannot take your rest. Nobody can press for you because nobody can wee wee for you. Nobody can eat for you. Nobody can go to the labor room for you. So you must press. 
I want to let you know something now. Faith is stronger than feeling. You may feel pain, but you don't feel faith. You express faith. You express what is in your spirit. Any quiet faith that you claim to have is not faith. It's fake. Faith is never quiet. Is faith quiet? Faith cries out to secure divine attention. David cried out, I shall not die but live. Faith is not quiet. Faith speaks out. We having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. If you have it, you will say it. If you have it, you will do what? Say it. You will say it. The violence of faith is at work in your life. You roar. Say with me, roar. To the point that anything around you must be made to hear you. Scripture says, as soon as they hear of me, your problem is waiting to hear you. That challenge is waiting to hear you. That circumstance is waiting to hear you. You have been so quiet. God will do it. God will do it. God does not do it like that. Too. It's what you say that commits him. You have been saying, God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. Do what? He said, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Not the very thing that I hear you wish. I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Should I shock you now? Your marital destiny is in your mouth. Your breakthrough is in your mouth. I remember one day someone came and said, Pastor, Will you believe that as I'm faithful serving God, not in this church, do you, will you believe that no brother, no brother, even by mistake, has even opened his mouth to say, I want to marry you? I say, I believe. <laughs> do you know why I say, I believe? The problem is not the brother. The problem is you. Let's see why it is you. Isaiah 34. I think I've been mentioning this scripture over and over. Some people don't want to get sense. You will get sense today. Isaiah 34 verse 16. Read with me. Seek ye out of the book of the law and read. No one of these shall fail. Is, is in your Bible? None shall want her mates. For my mouth it had commanded and his spirit it had gathered them. Your mouth must command the brother to appear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you know why the brother have not come? You have not called him. I'm not saying WhatsApp. Oh. I'm not saying Facebook. Oh. You know, some people go to look for a wife on Facebook. You will marry marine spirit. Yeah. <laughs> 
Some of them are victims already. For my mouth it had commanded. I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor gainsay. How? My husband, wherever you are, appear and locate me. You have called him. Somebody say Naso. <laughs> That's the law of the supernatural. That's the way the supernatural works. Some may never dare it. They will say, ah. Because they, so, the devil will be telling them, what if it does not work? Should I ask you a question? What if it works? Permit me to let you know this. You are not the doer, neither are you the assistant doer. The only thing God say, commit me by declaring it. Because he said, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. If you say nothing, God will do nothing. What you say determines what God will do. David cried out, I shall not die. So when you are tired, when you are no longer comfortable, when you can no longer tolerate that issue, there is need for you to cry out the cry of faith. So every time we cry out, God responds. You can't operate the violence of faith without breaking protocols. Tell your neighbor you must break protocols. You must break protocols. Even in prayer, you look too gentle. You are praying so that they won't hear what you are. Come and hear what I'm praying. Maybe the prayer self will even kill yourself. Come and hear, come and hear. You know, there are some enemies, when you are praying, they will pretend as if they are praying, they will come around and come and, come and be hearing. I will change the prayer topic. Any witchcraft assigned to monitor my prayer, die! You will see the person will take off. <laughs> he will take off because he's guilty. Witchcraft. Don't pray comfortable prayer. Pray the one that will discomfort your enemies. Come and monitor my prayer. I remember that 21 days prayer and fasting. I was just praying. One just sat down there as if he was praying. I knew he was not praying. I knew he was a devil. I just changed the prayer topic. If I know what's happening, he disappeared from this place. He zoom off. I can't find him in this church again. Winch. Tell your neighbor, you need violence. Your violence today determines your breakthrough tomorrow. Your violence today determines your breakthrough tomorrow. God said, I've given into thy hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Hishbon and his land. Look at the next statement. Begin to contend with him in battle. If you have given me, why do I need to fight again? I've given you. You now say I should fight. I've given into thy hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Hishbon and his land. Begin to contend with him in battle so and do what? Possess it. No contention, no possession. If you don't contend, you will never possess. If you don't contend, you will never possess. Our 
Our faith is a display of confidence and trust in the unfailing word of God. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. Wheresoever. Wheresoever. So wherever you send the word, it must go there. It must locate there. It must locate who is there. It must locate who it is sent to. You will never miss it again. No wonder Papa said, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. The devil will prefer that you don't talk, that you just keep quiet. Like a mumu. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything. Yes, sir. Declare now that thou mightest be justified. What you don't declare, you can never clear. You declare it, you clear it. How will you build the violence of faith? Number one, Scripture says, study to show thyself. A man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. If you must grow beyond where you are, study. If you don't grow your faith, you will grow in life. To grow means Challenges will be biting you left, right, and center. If you don't grow your faith, study to show. If you are studying, it will be showing. It's just like a student. If you know read, you know go pass. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Huh? Even if they give you mbo, what do you people call here? Is it mbo or ekbo? <laughs> it's a chips. Eh? Uh, you still are waiting? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Even if they give it to you, you didn't study, so you, got, you will still go and write rubbish. Study to show. If you are studying, it will be showing. It will be showing in your life. In your work, in your business, in your thinking. Your work is a reflection of what you are studying. Study. The more you study, you are building up the capacity of your faith for delivery. Scripture says God has given to us a measure of faith. A measure. Everybody here carries a measure. Faith is our currency in the market of the spirit. It's our purchasing power. It does not require immigration visa to enter any country. It can produce results for you anywhere. Faith is faith, whether you are in London or you are in America. Faith is faith, whether you are in Japan or Nigeria. Study. You keep studying. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You keep increasing your faith. Nobody will do that for you. Your faith is peculiar to you because your destiny is unique to you. The blessings appointed for you, they are unique to you, not to another person. If you fail to study, nothing will work. The next avenue to grow your faith is prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. And hear me? No wonder the enemy will continue to manipulate your fasting desires. Now we have entered the second half. Some people don't have any agenda to fast. There is no agenda in their plan to fast. Month na month. Now lie, month no be month. Your fasting determines what answers. Jesus said unto the disciples, Master, 
the fig tree which thou cursest is withered. And Jesus looked at them and said, Haven't I said unto you that if thou will have faith like that of the monster seed, thou will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and you shall have whatsoever you say. He said, But nevertheless, the difference now is nevertheless, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and what? Fasting. So fasting empowers our faith to produce. It empowers. Don't forget faith is a spirit. It's not just a confession. If it's a confession, why is it not working for outsiders? Faith is a spirit. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer. If there is a kind that will not go out, there is also a kind that will not come in. There is a kind that will not come. So you need your faith. The next avenue to building of your violence of faith is praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Every time you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are altering the forces that are making you weak. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue altereth mysteries with his spirit. You alter the arrangement, the programmings of the enemy. You alter them. You alter them. You alter the arrangements. He alterates mysteries. Our lives are surrounded with mysteries. There are forces that are vowed that we will not enter into God's plan. This brings us to the part B of the message. You need to be rescued from satanic plans. In the first service, we looked at being rescued from evil habits. There are habits that are not allowing you to go forward. But you bought them with your hand. You bought those habits. Now you are with your phone. There are some people that watch pornography before coming to church. As they finish service, they will still watch pornography. It's in your phone. It's in your phone. Just click YouTube. Bam. YouTube will be showing you all manner of him. Free movie. From watching pornography, you enter stage two, masturbation. Bedwetting. Nothing for nothing. You open the door, so the enemy begins to attack you. It is now a habit. Paul said, when I want to do good, the good I want to do, I do not. The evil I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, who shall deliver me? Evil habit can be contacted from evil friends. How did Ammon, the son of a king, got the anointing to sleep with his, his sister? Your sister, blood for blood. The same papa, the same mama. Who do you this winch? It's his friend that transferred the spirit. 90% of the evil habits you have today, somebody deposited it in you. You were not born with it. You didn't grow up with it in your father's house. Nor in your mother's house. Someone transferred their spirit to you. So, in friendship, what we get is transference of spirits. Now, you know what you they collect. The moment I sense you are not going my direction, eh? You know what I will do? I won't send you text message. I will blast you home, face to face. Go your way, let me go my way. So that I will arrive where God has in mind for me. In this service, you need to be rescued from satanic plan. Constantly. Say with me, constantly. There is an arrangement to exchange God's plan for satanic plan. Let me describe it the way you will understand it. In every football match, each team has a pattern they will want to play. Some will play 4-4-2 and the others will like to play 
three five one. Am I correct? Now, if your enemy succeed in pressuring you, you will play their pattern. And when you play their pattern, you must dance to their tune. And when you dance to their tune, you are now their victim. They will keep scoring. They will keep scoring. That's why you see, you see this people they are in control of the ball, 87 minutes, 87%. What they are telling you is that they are in charge of the game. Now hear me, are you in charge of your life? Or you are playing another person's pattern? Anytime your behavior is reflecting another person, you are already playing another person's plan. You have abandoned your own plan. You are a mumu, spiritual or dead. It's a sign you didn't know what your plan looked like. You didn't know. If you know, you will stick to your plan. Even God said unto the prophets, follow the pattern that I've given to you in building the ark. The enemy is steadily working on you, whining your head, brainwashing you to make sure your plan is abandoned so that you will follow his plan. And when you follow the plan of the devil, you never arrive at God's appointed place for you. You never. You will never. Struggle anyhow you like. There is a constant plan to exchange God's plan for your life for satanic plan. Constant. Constantly. The enemy is worrying to make sure that the plan of God for your life is exchanged. And before you know what's happening, before you know what's happening, you now see yourself. Sir, I saw myself. I was swimming in River Niger. In fact, in three minutes, I've swim the water. When did you become a diver? Eh? When did you become a diver? I remember one young man. The father was a commissioner for works, commissioner for lands. So he had he now had free car to be carrying free guests. Before you know what's happening, they're now baptizing with different marine spirits. You know, marine spirit they get a battalion. Thirty-seven armored brigade. Thirty-two armored brigade. So that was how the thing now entered him. So when he sleeps, he see himself going with them. One day he woke up with force and started crying. He says, he says sir, this thing is not normal. I need to be free. I say, who carry you go? Who carry you go? Hear me? Let me say this one to shock all of you that I'm seeing your face now. Sex is a covenant. Blood for blood. If the person you are sleeping with is not your legally ordained wife, married, you don't pay bride price. You are doing what we call exchange of causes. You collect the causes from his generation and give you the one from his generation. That's what we call compound interest. <laughs> Am I saying something to somebody? What you collected is what we call compound interest. They compounded the causes upon your life. So if you like, that's how many destinies have been trapped. But today you will be free. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. When the enemy has changed God's plan for your life, you now struggle to break through. You now struggle to marry. But scripturally, you have been ordained by God to marry. You now struggle to build house. You struggle to succeed. You struggle to have children. It's an exchange. But whoever is exchanging you, shortchanging you, today their plan will fail. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. In whichever way, hear me, the plan of the enemy is that you be buried. 
that you not marry, that you will not rise, that you will not build a house, that you don't have a car, that nothing good will work for you, that none of God's appointed blessing will show you your life. But today, enough is enough. I say enough is enough. You have tolerated it enough today. Their yoke must break. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Let me say this and we rise up to pray. Jacob was a classic example. He was born in the lineage of the covenant. But he will never reflect the covenant blessing. One day, say with me, one day. He said, is this how I'll be living like a vagabond? Scripture called him a swindler. In fact, he was the one that started 419. Scripture called him a swindler. That day, he said, I will not let thee go except you bless me. Rise up to your feet. That day, he collected his inheritance. I will not let thee go except you bless me. I will not let thee go. Meaning, Today, whatever the enemy has been collecting from me, I am taking it back. You are taking back your original plan. You are taking back your breakthrough. You are taking back your change of story. I'd like you to lift up your voice. Lord, any manipulation, any satanic exchange that has taken place in my life, Lord, I place a demand on your hand. Restore. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Restore any satanic exchange that have taken place in my life, in my destiny. Restore. I place a demand on your hand. I place a demand on your hand. Let the spell be broken. Let the manipulation be shattered. I demand total restoration. I demand total recovery. Total restoration recovery if you cry out you will be out if you don't cry out you will not be out you must cry out if you must be out father I place a demand on your hand by your fire by the blood of Jesus whatever the enemy has stolen from my life it is written in Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Every blessing. Make it to real. Jesus, make it liane, risoneto. In la preketus isola, berandi odo, jacusis in ende, recutalia, mendolobro, jacute, in la do, redos isole cata, recatola ba, jacateli ababa, radose kiketula ba, in le preketelia and lebosha, zatolia and de garega de gade, la baraga de gaziga de garegata, Lord, by your fire, free me. Rescue me. Cry out now. Rescue me. Deliver me from the bondage of the wicked. Rescue me from satanic arrangements. Rescue me from satanic manipulation. Let God hear your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Scripture says by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. 
I remember just, I just remember one encounter now. One young man in my former station came to me. He said, you appeared in my village. I said, what am I doing in your village? I don't know your village. He said, you appeared in my village in the dream. They helped me. And as they saw, they saw you, you told them, let him go now or all of you are wasted. And that was how he was freed. He said, sir, I've been suffering from a bondage that I cannot explain. It is more than 17 years. He was freed by that appearance. And I, I just anointed him and said, no more of this attack. No more of this attack. One of my accountants in a, when I was in Ahoda, <laughs> I appeared in her village. I was telling her what happened to the mother from 1954. She recorded it. Me? 1954? Where? It can only be by the Spirit of God. She documented it in and brought it. As she brought it, I prayed for her. The cage that they use in locking her break. She carried her baby. All eyes closed. Before I'm going to pray for you, all eyes closed, all eyes bow. You are here, you are not born again. And you want to make it right with Jesus? Well, everybody stand up, my friend. You want to make it right with Jesus? Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come right now. I want to pray with you. Before I pray, general prayer.